Again, huge thank you to uh, our VBS leaders this past week. I mean, what a blessing that we got to spend so much time together with so many cool kids. I learned a bunch of names, and I, oh, I hope I remember them all. So, so excited to be here with you. My name is Josh, and um, I think I got a little bit too much in, the, in that back one, number two there is what's causing the feedback. But uh, we are right here at the beginning of uh, a really important series for us as a church. It's called uh, Lay It All Down, and it's based on Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And, um, and I'm going to be honest with you. I said this last week. Um, this series is like the one series that I, I didn't want to preach. It's the one series that I was like, oh, are you sure, God? Like, do, do I have to do this one right now? Um, but this verse, Matthew 11, 28 through 30, can you put that up? Uh, the verse 11, 28 through 30. Th this verse has been, oh, cool. People, too. I think if you X out the back, that'll work. Yes. Sorry, I just got to grab my clicker. I forgot. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. This, this one verse has, has really been kind of like burdening me the last three or four months. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I asked the question last week, like, hey, um, how many of you feeling um, easy on the burden and light right now, right? And I didn't see a whole lot of hands. Truth is, it's been probably one of the most challenging 16 months of most of our lives that we've been through. And, and I believe that we all have like this kind of proverbial backpack that we carry around with us. And in that backpack are, are all these kind of like pretty significant burdens that, that God never really intended us to carry. But the problem is, it doesn't look like this one, does it? The burdens that you and I pick up on a regular basis, things that God never intended us to, you can't really see it, right? Most of the time, it's an emotional burden or a mental burden or a relational burden. And they are literally dragging us down in ways that, that Jesus never intended. And so he writes these verses. And, and I told you last week, I'm struggling to kind of live out these verses in my own life right now, which is all the more reason why I feel like we're supposed to spend some time together. But can we just take a moment and unpack the backpack. I'm going to ask a friend to come up and give me a hand with this because I don't think I can get it off by myself. But proverbially, he's coming. Thank you. We all have kind of like this, this backpack of things that we carry around that, that God never intended us to. There's a, yep, you got it. Thank you, kind sir. Awesome. Okay, you're just going to stay up here and hold that the rest of the sermon. Okay. So, what are some of the burdens that we carry? What are some of the weights that we pick up that, that God never intended us to? We talked a little bit about it last week. Let's call, um, let's call that one perfection, right? That we always have to get it right. And then um, how about another burden that sometimes we pick up that like control? No, nobody else here has that burden, do they? The burden of trying to control things ever? Yeah, so we pick up this idea like, hey, we're in control. We've got to figure it out. It's on us to figure out our lives, to hold it all together. Or here's another burden that many of us have picked up, especially since this kind of new freedom we found after COVID. I'm going to call it busyness. The burden of busyness, right? So for like 12 or 14 months, we kind of just had to stay home. There was no place for us to go. And all of a sudden, about four or five weeks ago, we got some serious freedom. And then our calendars just exploded. So, so perfection and control, busyness, all things that God never really intended us to pick up in the context of our lives with him. I, there's some more in here. I think, what do you guess, Ian? Probably 75 pounds? Is that Rough estimate? Yeah. Here's another one. Comparison. Does that ever get you in trouble in your life? Where well, you're trying to compare your life with somebody else's, their, their, their kind of perfect world, perfect job, perfect marriage, perfect kids, 
and somehow you just don't measure up. Another one that we often carry. Oh, here's one. And I'll call this the one for today. The burden. That's a little tippy. The burden of appearances. Trying to, to look like we have it all together. Trying to convince people around us that, that our lives are okay, even when they're not. You see, here's what I think. I believe that many of us, we unintentionally, but regularly, we pick up these, these burdens that, that God never intended us to carry. Things that, like, we think, especially culturally, we think it's important, right? This, the busyness and the comparison and, and, and the control and the holding it all together and the appearance of everything being perfect in our lives. But all it does, really, it's pretty tight, all it does is create this almost unmanageable burden in our lives. And yet most of us, we don't walk around with a, with a backpack full of these things that we see every day. And if we did, we'd probably be like, hey, this is dumb. <laughs> right? Just 70 pounds and I'm already sweating for five minutes. Imagine if, if our burdens, right? Imagine if the burdens that we carry that God never intended us to carry, what, what if we could visibly see them? What if we could see them in ourselves? What if we could see them in each other? Wouldn't we want to do something about it? Right? Wouldn't we want to change the burdens that we carry as people? So I'm going to address this last one. Today, I want to talk about appearances. And, and I think that, that this specific one is probably, perhaps, one of the most significant struggles that all of us have, especially in the context of North America and the United States. And, and if you don't believe me, let me ask you one question. Oops, these are from last week. One question, how are you doing? Now, you and I understand that like when we see people and we just like, how are you doing? We, we know that the like default response, right? Like we, we know what we're supposed to do. How are you doing? Fine. How are you doing? Good. Meanwhile, you're carrying around 75 pounds of burdens. You might even have like a proverbial shotgun wound in the side of your body. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm all right. See, we've been conditioned as a society to show that we're okay. To kind of tell the world that everything's fine, even if it's not. To ignore the burdens. To push them aside. To act like the world's fine. All because we're so consumed with preserving appearances. We've accepted this notion that we have to just call ourselves fine, good, okay. When was the last time somebody gave you an honest answer to that question, and did it surprise you? <laughs> I've been trying that this week. When people like, ask me how I'm doing, I try to give them an honest answer, like, whoa, I didn't need to know that. Right? Like, <laughs> that is not what you're supposed to just say fine. You're supposed to just say good. We've been conditioned as a society for years to put on a face, to put on an outward appearance. And when we don't, when we don't, we, we don't even know what, people don't even know what to do with themselves. Don't even know how to respond. You see, I read this quote by Jenny Allen just this past week. It says, I have a secret for you. Nobody is okay, fine, or good, but goodness, we are all tired of trying to pretend that we are. Nobody's really okay, fine, good, but we are growing tired of pretending that we are. That is one of the most significant burdens that you and I carry in our society today, the appearance of fine, okay, that God never intended us to, and it even happens in the context of the church, right? So let's look at some of the ways that this, this burden of fine, this burden of okay, kind of manifests itself of our lives, right? The burden of appearances. Society tells us we need to look younger, smarter, tougher, prettier, richer, stronger, more put together, more confident, more in control, more capable, and oh, by the way, I'm fine. What would you add to your list? 
of the appearance that the world tells you you need to keep up? When was the last time that you saw an ad to help you look older? When was the last time you had an ad to help you look less smart? When was the last time you watched a commercial about looking less fit, right? Our society has consumed this belief that we have to keep the appearances up. Younger, smarter, tougher, prettier, richer. Stronger, more put together, more in control. It's just insidious. And it becomes this unmanageable burden in our lives. I'm not a huge social media fan. A few of you kind of follow me on a couple different platforms, and that's fine. I, I don't post very much at all. But somewhere in the last 10 years, uh, one of the um, platforms came out. It was called Instagram. And it was a follow-up to the original Facebook one. And, and basically, the, what Instagram turned into for our society, it was just like, hey, my best life on display for everybody to see. And you always took the best pictures, and you always like, showed the best videos, and you always had to come up with these really witty captions. And then something, something took place, and some of you may not have heard about this, but uh, at the time, I was, running a, I was helping to run a youth group. And some of the kids in my youth group, they got so tired of like, the fake plasticness of Instagram, all the like, touched-up photos and all the touched-up videos and all the like, you know, fake appearances that were happening. They, they started what they called their Finstagram account. So it was still Instagram, but it was like their covert account, and they posted their real pictures without the makeup and without the shower and with, like, you know, when they are having a bad day. And they only let certain people follow them. Anybody heard of that one before? So, like, the next generation was getting so tired, and I think they still are, getting so tired of having to keep up appearances. They're like, hey, like, this just isn't real. So I need a place where I can be real. Many of us feel that way. Many of us feel that way in our own lives right now, in our, in our own workplaces, our own communities, our own marriages, that this, this burden to be all these things, to hold up these appearances, it's just exhausting. This, this is our real problem. This is perhaps a more real pandemic than COVID itself. The American way of holding up appearances, even when we're not fine, even when we're not okay, even when we're not good. So these are our burdens, but what do we do about them? What, what do we do with, with the reality? If all of society that, in which we live has by and large completely committed to this idea of appearances, that we're fine, that we're okay, that we're good, that we don't talk about the burdens that we actually carry, how do we ever unload those burdens if we don't aren't even supposed to have them to begin with, right? How do we let go of these things that we carry if we can't even admit that they exist? Well, that's where Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 comes in. This is one of the reasons why, why this verse is so powerful. Because in, in these verses, Jesus gives us a three-step process to unburden ourselves from appearances. Now, I don't want to make this overly simplified, right? I don't want to just say, here's three points, here's a conclusion, go have a great day, good luck with your 75 pounds of weight, right? It sounds really simple, the three-step process that Jesus gives to us in these verses. But I can tell you from experience, it is so challenging to put into practice. It is way easier to read than it is to live. It is way easier to understand than it is to experience. But Jesus, he, he starts out and he recognizes these burdens that we carry. He recognizes the burden of appearances to be stronger and smarter and tougher and prettier and more controlled and more put together, to have a better marriage or a better group of kids or whatever else that burden of appearances is. And so he says, first thing, come to your best friend. Come to social media. Come to a blog post. Okay, let me ask you, where do you go when you feel burdened? You don't have to put your hands up, but answer that question for yourself. When you realize the burden's gotten too heavy, that the weight's too much, that appearances are not what they really are, where do you go? Because the orientation 
of our hearts, the orientation of our minds, the orientation of ourselves, when we finally realize that we're living with this burden of appearance, that matters so much. And so what Jesus says is, come to me. Not self-help books, not podcasts, not social media, not the next workout program or diet. Come to me is the invitation. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Now, let me show you something. And I I said this last week, and I'll say it again. We can't come to Jesus with our burdens if we're not willing to admit that we have them. We can't come to Jesus with our burdens if, if we can't just say, hey, I'm tired. I am burdened. I am worn out. So that first step towards reducing the burden of appearances in our lives is the orientation of our hearts. It's recognizing that we're burdened and then going towards Jesus. So where do you go when you're overwhelmed? Is it food? Is it music? Is it alcohol? Is it sports? Is it friends? Where, where do you go when you're overwhelmed? Or is it Jesus? Is Jesus the person that you turn to when the weight gets too heavy and the burden gets too long and the appearances feel just altogether too fake? Where do you go? Jesus invites us, come to me. And then, okay, next part of the verse. He says, come to me, all you are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Can I tell you something? Unburdening our souls is not just a one-time process. Unburdening our souls isn't just something that comes very simply. It is a learned skill. Learning from Jesus what it means to live freely and lightly, as he talks about. Like this, that's, it takes effort. Some of the most talented people in the world, you pick the field, right? Whether it's sports or woodworking or music or whatever else, they'll tell you that they had to work for it. There was a learning process. And so let's just look for a minute at some of the examples that that Jesus gave. Right? He says, learn from me. Let's talk about this. What did Jesus do when he was burdened? Where did Jesus go when he was overwhelmed? How did Jesus respond to all the different expectations that people had for him, right? They expected him to be a king, a conquering king. They expected him to be a savior. They expected him to be a healer. They expected him to be a doctor, right? Like all these different expectations and teachers. What happens when Jesus gets overwhelmed? And, and do you think Jesus really ever struggled with this burden of appearances? Do you think Jesus ever really struggled with the the burden of of people wanting him to be something he was not? Here's the answer. That was a rhetorical question. Matthew 11, 18, just like 10 verses earlier, right? Exact same chapter, Matthew 11, 18. Jesus talks about his cousin John, John the Baptist, right? He says, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he's got a demon. And then, verse 19, remember appearances? So here's the thing with John the Baptist. He spent most of his life out in the woods, um, covered in camel's hair. He would eat locusts and honey, and um, he was a very unique individual. But God called him to that so that he could prepare the way for Jesus. So people were like really interested in John the Baptist because of the way that he lived. Then it goes on, verse 19, the Son of Man, Jesus is referring to himself. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, so the opposite of what? So John never drank alcohol, right? And he didn't eat kind of the normal foods. He just ate from the woods. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, here's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus knew all around him that that people were trying to put these labels on him to have him appear who they wanted him to be. Sometimes they would call him a glutton or a drunkard. Sometimes they would call him a prophet. On a rare occasion, they would call him king. But throughout all of Jesus' ministry, there was all these people that were so confused. Like, are, are, you, are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? Are you John the Baptist coming back from the dead? Remember all these questions? People had no idea who Jesus really was, and yet they wanted so much from him. They, they were hungry and they wanted to be fed, right? They were, they were sick and they wanted to be healed. They were broken and they wanted new life, right? Over and over. And so Jesus himself, I think, 
Basically, the three and a half years that Jesus spent in earthly ministry was a giant identity crisis for the whole world at the time. (laughs) Who is this guy? Who do I need Jesus to be? Think about this for a minute. When Jesus was sad, what did he do? He wept. Probably one of the most famous verses because it's the shortest in the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35. But that's not the only time. Did you know that? At least three different times in the gospel we see that Jesus gave himself space to weep, to cry, to grieve, to put aside, I'm okay, I'm good, I'm fine. When Jesus was sad, he wept. When Jesus was tired, he slept. Do you know how many times that says that Jesus fell asleep? In the Gospels? Seven different times in the Gospels, Jesus went to sleep. And a really important one, do you know this one? In Mark chapter 4, verses 38 through 40, he and his disciples are out in a boat. This giant storm comes up, and he's in the bottom of the boat taking a nap. And all his disciples are like, um, we're going to die. So, like, you can't sleep, right? You think about, like, the appearance, like, the disciples are thinking, man, this guy's insane, right? Like, how could he just be sleeping in the bottom of the boat when we need him to fix us, heal us? You ever been there? You ever feel like Jesus is asleep in your life? So Jesus, Jesus routinely chose authenticity over appearance. Jesus routinely chose to be authentic over keeping up the appearances. When he was sad, he wept. When he was tired, he slept. When he was empty, he went away to get filled up. You know how many times in the gospel it says that Jesus went away to a solitary place or he went off to pray? 25 different times in four gospels. Jesus would disappear from the busyness, from all the people that wanted something from him, just to be alone with God. So what did Jesus do with the burdens? When he, go back to that, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. He says, learn from me. Jesus set this beautiful example of authenticity over appearance. How about when he was angry? What did Jesus do when he was angry? Dear friends, Jesus got angry, just so you know. The one that we're most aware of, right, is the one where he starts flipping tables in the temple because... The religious leaders of the day were keeping people from coming to Jesus, from coming to God, right? They were putting all these extra expectations on them. That's a a really important one. But in Mark chapter 10, right, this is one that we don't even know about. Oftentimes we forget. Jesus got mad at his disciples because they were keeping the little people from coming. Jesus got so angry with his disciples when they were trying to, like, push the little people away from him, right? There's all these kids that wanted to hang out with Jesus, and Jesus is like, hello, what do you think I came for, (laughs) right? When he was sad, he wept. When he was tired, he slept. And when he was empty, he got away to be filled. When he was angry, he showed it in ways that were productive. What about when Jesus was wronged, right? How many times was Jesus wronged over that three-and-a-half-year period? the Gospels. And he confronted the people and he was honest with them. Jesus sets this example over and over and over, routinely resisting the temptation to keep up appearances. I mean, think about this. In one story, he feeds 5,000 people. The very next story, the people, more people are coming, they're hungry, and Jesus goes, no, today's not the day I'm going to feed you. Right? He, he fed people when they weren't looking for it, and he chose not to when they were. Jesus, Jesus wasn't here to keep up appearances. He wasn't here to just feed people who were hungry. He wasn't here to just heal every person that there was. He was here to do his Father's will, to show us what an authentic life looks like. To weep when he was sad, to sleep when he was tired, to get away and be filled when he was empty. To be honest, when he was angry. This is the example that Jesus gives us over and over and over. And you and I, we have this same temptation in our lives every single day, right? We have those same temptations over and over. The burdens of appearances to look strong and put together. To meet everybody's needs to fix all the problems. These burdens Jesus faced himself, and yet he did something very unique with it, right? He did something very different. Rather than giving in to those temptations, rather than like 
trying to feed every person that ever walked the earth or trying to heal every person that walked the earth. He chose authenticity over appearances. So as I said, there's, there's three steps in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to unburden ourselves. First one is where do we go when we're burdened, right? Come to me, it says. And then the second one, first we have to come to Jesus, then we have to learn from Jesus, right? We have to understand the way that Jesus lived. Jesus didn't, like, just show us all these amazing things, like these stories that he's told and the miracles that he did. That, that wasn't, like, just to show himself as Savior, but to show himself as human, right? The Jesus who got tired, the Jesus who got angry, the Jesus who needed to be alone. Jesus showed us over and over and over what an authentic life looks like. So we come to Jesus, then we learn from Jesus, and then the last one, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The last step that Jesus has, if we're going to unburden ourselves of this tremendous weight of keeping up appearances, we have to make different choices. It's not enough just to come to Jesus. I mean, that's the first step, and it's really important, but that's not enough. Nor is it enough just to learn from Jesus, right? To, to know all the things that Jesus did, we have to put them into practice. We have to choose to live out that same authenticity that Jesus did. That's the three-step process, and that's what makes it so hard. It's not just coming to Jesus, and it's not just learning from Jesus, but then it's going out and living it, living like Jesus lived. Weeping when we're sad, sleeping when we're tired, getting away to be filled when we're empty. Every single expectation that is placed upon you, every single expectation that is placed upon you in the context of your life leads you with a choice, leaves all of us with a choice. Am I going to put on appearances? Am I going to just say, fine, okay, good? Am I just going to put up an image that I want the world to see? Or am I going to be real? So let me ask you this question. In what areas of your life are you prone to pursue appearance over authenticity? Okay, can I say that again? What aspects of your life are you prone to, to pursue appearance over authenticity? Because whatever that aspect of your life is, that's your starting point in coming to Jesus. And whatever area you struggle to show that you're stronger, smarter, prettier, faster, more put together, you pick that area of your life. That, that's your starting point for unburdening. And then what happens is you and I, we have been psychologically, emotionally, relationally conditioned to just say, fine, good, okay, <laughs> right? Watch that this time, okay? This is my challenge for you in this one week. Watch how many times somebody asks how you're doing and watch how quickly your response, <laughs> like, you've got it, like you've got the words on your lips before they finish the question. See how often that happens. The journey towards an authentic life that lays down appearances, it starts with this question, what parts of our lives are we most prone to try to keep up appearances? To make the world think we're okay. And then every single one of those areas, whatever it is, you name it. I'm not going to ask you to put your hands up or send me an email or tell me all about these areas of your life. But you need to know what part of your life are you most likely to try to keep up appearances. And then you've got a choice. Are you going to keep carrying the burden all alone? Are you going to put another rock in your bag? Because nobody can see the backpack that you're carrying? Because nobody can see the burdens that's weighing you down? Are you going to come to Jesus? Are you going to learn from Jesus? Are you going to understand the way that Jesus did it? To model the way that Jesus lived, right? How's it going to go for you? Every single one of these areas becomes a choice. To trust ourselves or to trust Jesus. Depend on ourselves or depend on Jesus. To hold ourselves together or let Jesus hold us together.
So what I want to do is I want to give us an opportunity just to pray, but I'm not going to use words. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this verse back up from Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And, and I just want to give us a minute or two together, and I'm going to let you pray through this verse. And here's how it might go. In your own heart, in your own mind, you don't have to pray it out loud. But So, so Jesus, I, I come to you because I am really weary and I'm burdened. And Jesus, I come to you. Would you show me, would you teach me how to live like you? I set down my burdens and I pick up a new way of life. Go ahead and spend some time alone. Let's pray through Matthew 11, 28. Create a quiet space for you and Jesus. Jesus, hear our prayers. We are weary, and we are burdened, and we are worn out, and we're tired. And we want to learn from you. We want to model the life that you lived. To give ourselves rest when we're tired to give ourselves space when we're empty, to let ourselves be sad, to weep in the midst of the pain that we carry. We cannot do it without you, Jesus. Show us how to choose authenticity over appearance. Teach us to live freely and lightly, we pray. Amen.